So I finally finished the Duncan grind. This took me a little longer than I thought, simply because I don't like this shit. Uh, this game is going to be very, very good. One of the best ones I've had in a long time. But it's in a ship that I don't like, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I really enjoyed the Tier 8, if you remember that video. It's quite a while ago now, but we finally got nine 406 millimeter guns. Yes, it had a giant citadel, but a lot of HP, and we're decently maneuverable, and we're able to angle in that ship. Uh, Duncan has a lot of the same issues and strengths, right? We are able to angle, but we still do have that giant citadel to deal with. But we get a super heal now. The problem I had, or have had, with this ship is that it continues with 406mm guns. And they're fine, and they're actually going to perform extremely well here. Uh, <laughs> so me complaining about the guns is not going to look very reasonable considering this video. Uh, but trust me, throughout the games I've been playing with this ship, it was pretty annoying having these 406mm guns. I'm really not sure what it was about them. Um, I'm reminded again, as I've been playing the St. Vincent a little bit, at how good Short Fuse AP with Battle Cruiser levels of dispersion, and at least on St. Vincent, you do have 457, so there's some pretty impressive overmatch there that helps a lot against cruisers. Vincent's an absolute beast. Um, as for Duncan, though, I think I was just missing out on that overmatch and the general punchiness of Vincent guns. It seems like the actual pen values on the Duncan are probably a lot lower, given the slightly smaller caliber. Um, the super heal though is quite nice, and I should talk about that um, if you've been playing up the line and watching these videos as I've been grinding myself. You get a super heal now, and it's really important that you use the super heal efficiently. This is going to be the biggest difference between uh, Duncan and uh, the tier 8. I actually forget what it's called right now. Uh, but anyways, the tier 8, you don't get a super heal. Duncan, you do. And your HP pool doesn't really change all that much, but the potential healing and tankiness you have is greatly increased. You'll notice that we can heal back 16,000 HP right now out of 40,000. <laughs> so there's really not much point in actually using our heal yet because, well, we have plenty of healing available to us. We're really not in that much of a threat. We do eat this one torpedo. That is something that greatly limits the amount of healing. You'll notice just how little we can get back from that torpedo hit. Everything else we took, flooding, fires, even overpen, is pretty light damage that this super heal can heal back quite a lot of. It's this citadel and torpedo damage you want to be very cautious of taking. That greatly limits what your ship can do. So as you see me play this game, just notice how I tend to let my heal build up. And I'm really trying to stay angled and not take uh, especially those citadels, but also torpedoes. I should also mention that the only reason I'm able to play somewhat bow in here in a ship with pretty bad armor and pretty low HP um, is that there's this island next to me. Normally in a Duncan or any of these British battle cruiser type ships, you're going to want to play on the flanks. You're probably going to want to be able to use your speed and your concealment to disengage and constantly being able to pressure the enemy team without over committing or fully committing your ship. That's really key here with these uh, battle cruisers. I'm just doing that with an island instead of playing a little farther back and kiting away, that kind of thing, which I probably would be doing if we didn't have such a strong force kind of out on our A, B lines. You can see we got a Bismarck, a Donskoy, a Friesland there. But we want some sort of crossfire to uh, somewhat deal with the 9-10 line. The other reason we're not pushing, just to quickly note on this game, is that they have a lot of ships here. We've already experienced a torpedo salvo, and pushing around this corner is a great way to die. We're just waiting for the game to progress, seeing if our team can win on the opposite flank, which looks like they're actually doing a pretty solid job of. Being aware that there's a DD and C, we could get Torp from back there. Um, a lot of this situational awareness is pretty important in a ship that can be overwhelmed quite quickly. That's something that I make a mistake on when I haven't been playing these ships with super heals very much. I tend to get overconfident and just think, oh, I got these 40,000 HP heals, nothing can kill me. Uh, and then I end up being pressured a lot, forced to use my heal. And then I'm killed very, very quickly because I've been overcommitted, too close to people that can very easily burst me down once that heal has been used up. And that's kind of the key here with Duncan and certainly with St. Vincent as you get into the higher tiers. 
Uh, there's some pretty nasty ships that you're going to have to deal with. And I really should mention, as this is the last video on the Duncan for a while, that as I've played this ship, I've really had to train myself out of not fully relying on these torpedoes, or not wanting to use them all the time. It's very easy, and you're going to see in this game that we are able to just play bow in and constantly send these torps whenever we want to. Um, there's not going to be many games like that in the Duncan or the St. Vincent, where you have such a powerful island that you can just kind of sit on the whole game and limit the number of people that can shoot at you. Uh, it's not always going to happen. And I found myself oftentimes thinking, with my super heal, I can sit bow in, even in open water, maybe even use my concealment to disengage in some of those situations, where I can use speed boost in reverse. But I want to be bow in so I can use these crazy 30,000 damaging torps. Uh, that got me killed a lot. <laughs> so definitely something you should be aware of. It's not worth risking and fully committing your ship. That's what you are bow in, especially in Duncan. Uh, St. Vincent to a lesser extent because we don't have that gigantic citadel that everyone can hit on the Duncan. Uh, but you're very committed when you're bow in, especially in open water without this island to really provide a lot of cover that we can reverse into. Don't get greedy for the torps. As hilarious as they are when they hit, and the reload is actually kind of nuts considering how much damage they can possibly do, uh, don't, don't overcommit for them. The guns are still going to be the bread and butter, even though I do personally don't find Duncan guns all that amazing. Again, this video is a bit of an outlier on Duncan guns. Uh, I found they just shattered and bounced a lot more of the time. Keep in mind here, though, too, we are top tier. I should mention the matchmaker, as we do have a pretty insane game coming up here. Uh, a very long match, one that's not over in the first five minutes, is always nice to see. And we're top tier, which it has allowed us to play in a bit riskier of positions and is going to allow us to carry out this game uh, pretty well. So even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Duncan, I still think this is definitely a line that you should be grinding. If you're a battleship player, Battle cruiser player, um, I think you'd really, really enjoy this line. As I've played the tier 10 a little bit again, that ship is just so amazing, the Vincent. You're gonna see some videos coming up as I play it more on this channel, but that is that final reward that's actually worth it at tier 10. And this isn't one of those scenarios where the whole line is a really difficult grind. Uh, maybe like Vermont was, maybe still is through Kansas, for example. At least the tier eight I found to be quite good. And as you can see, based on this game, uh, Duncan can be very good as well. It's possible. I just was misplaying in some of my earlier games in this ship. Took a while to get used to playing this thing. Realizing that we don't have the overmatch of the Vincent, we have to look for those broadsides. And as you can see, the battle cruiser dispersion has been awesome. That's one of the key features here of these guns. So even though we don't have that overmatch, there's a lot of consistency. That was a blind shot there. We weren't actually locked on. Uh, but as we talk about accuracy, of course, it's the one salvo that I'm missing. <laughs> it's pretty classic. Uh, but the accuracy is pretty nice. So if you're able to find those crossfires, those broadside targets, it's quite nice. And you'll notice how much I'm actually just relying on the armor piercing here. Even though the HE is pretty solid on this entire line, I tend to just value AP damage much higher than the HE. That said, I do still want to take uh, Expert Loader. There are definitely situations where I want to be spamming the high explosive, but with short fuse AP, you can get some pretty good pens into superstructures, like into that Sharn Horse, for example. Um, at tier 10, there are examples of ships where we want to be spamming HE at them, and being able to swap over to HE to deal some really high damage to DDs is always nice to do, especially on these British ships where they do have some pretty insane HE alpha. There's some other ships in the game, uh, German ones especially, but even American and Japanese ones where they don't actually have the highest HE alpha. A lot of times it's just better to still shoot armor piercing and just rely on overpens to deal your damage to destroyers in a lot of battleships. Uh, this isn't really one of those cases. You definitely want to be uh, considering swapping over to the HE if you have time, or playing in a div with someone with a radar or an, an, a friendly DD that is going to get into gunfights that you know are gonna be coming up. That way you can support your team reasonably well. Um, as we back off here, I'm again mentioning that this island play is very important for this specific game to work out. It's very, very useful to do. We still haven't used our super heal, so it is available. Again, I'm letting myself get low 
Uh, that can be a way of baiting the enemy team into trying to finish you off without realizing that you have a super heal available. Uh, it's an interesting tactic, but isn't always going to be something that the enemy team is thinking of. You shouldn't assume that everyone on the enemy team is uh, an above average player that's going to be thinking like that. That's probably not the case in random battles, but it can work in certain competitive settings. Ranked, certainly, there is a little more focus fire, I think, at least at the higher leagues, that you could take advantage of. Um, as this game is somewhat wrapping up, uh, let me know what you're thinking about this line in the comments down below. Did you guys enjoy the Duncan? I might be totally off base here. Uh, considering this good game, at the very end of my grinding session through the Duncan, it's given me some pause. I was originally going to be very, very negative in my look, uh, final look at the Duncan, uh, but this game certainly was good enough that I had to make it a little bit more positive, focusing on especially the main guns actually being pretty good in this scenario. Um, I think that just comes down to Battlecruiser Dispersion and me finally finding myself uh, in good enough positions where I'm, again, catching these broadsides. The consistency there is uh, pretty nice as far as I'm concerned. But again, I do think it's still a Tier 10 focused line. I think that the Tier 9 and the Tier 8, while decent, uh, don't really compete when it comes to per tier power level, uh, especially against that Tier 10. The Vincent... It really is amazing, and uh, I can't wait to play it some more on this channel. I've actually been, at least one night, I tried some clan battles again. It's been several years, and Vincent was the ship to play. And my goodness, does that thing slap people around. <laughs> and apparently Duncan does too. Pretty far range, well, not this one, but the earlier salvos into that Marlboro. Pretty decent range to be getting Citadels in. So, uh, although Marlboro is a pretty weak tier 9, let's be honest. Uh, can we wrap up a Kraken yet? Nearly 300,000 damage Kraken. Uh, no, it's not quite to be. My team is going to kill that Kitakatsi. But still, nearly 300,000 damage in a Duncan is pretty awesome, especially considering a lot of my earlier games in this ship. So four kills um, and pretty good rewards, as you can see. Although, keep in mind, I do tend to run a lot of XP and credit boosters because I just have those available to me. They're always useful to have. And on 2.4k base XP, it's going to result in a very fast grind. So real quick, just to show you the difference here in the armor, uh, it's pretty massive, this Citadel. It's <laughs> uh, pretty gigantic. Uh, let's just make sure that we all understand. This is why you don't want to get caught bow in, because if you're forced to turn, you're going to die. Um, as for the Vincent, though, once you get up the tiers, yeah, suddenly it's a waterline citadel, and even though this looks a little weak on top, um, it's pretty well protected. And there's actually even a bit of turtle back. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Although overmatchable by 40, uh, what is that? 460s. Um, so you model guns and up. Still, the armor, even though the the actual HP isn't that much higher, only 79,000 on Vincent you get a significantly tankier ship because you're able to maneuver, be a lot more broadside than the Duncan. They do have the weakness, of course, that you do have to watch out for, again, of the uh, the bow and stern, 25 millimeters, 32 everywhere else. So you gotta be a little bit careful in these ships, even with that super heal. So here's the captain that I was running on the uh, Duncan here. You can see Brisk being a very useful skill here to allow us to flank, get those cross shots. Gunfeeder is just always nice on a ship that you want to be using both shell types. I honestly probably use the AP a little too much, uh, especially in this video, but even in others where uh, just kind of rely on spamming one uh, ammo type too much. Concealment, I'm even taking fire prevention, notice. I, think, I really think Furious is bait. Uh, even super heavy AP shells. I think these are just bait. Uh, you can still get bursted down and burnt down in this ship. It's not that tanky. Um, so just a standard build other than that. Uh, equipment wise, we're definitely rocking reload mod, concealment, even running steering gears. If you're in a kiting situation or in open water where you're wanting to maneuver a lot, it's very, very useful for just dodging incoming damage completely. Damage control system is an option as well. Although, notice no propulsion mod. It's because it's baked in. It's a very fast accelerating ship. Obviously, aiming systems, that's pretty standard. 
Super heal, speed boost, always nice to have. One thing I did want to mention though, that you could consider, we'll be looking at this a little bit on Vincent specifically. I'm taking damage control here instead of steering gears. And that's because the commander doesn't take basics of survivability. I'm actually specking into lower tier skills a little bit more. I want brisk and grease the gears because fast turrets on a ship that you're maneuvering a lot, potentially swapping sides, it's very, very nice to have. Although, you know, I could see the other build as well. There's a lot of flexibility here to play with uh, these battle cruisers, which is really, really nice. And I think the line overall has been decent to play through. It's really the tier nine that I didn't enjoy that much. And the tier six, simply because it had six guns only. We all know how I feel about six gun ships. <laughs> so that is the Duncan complete and we're on to the Vincent. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.